Hi, Joe here at Willy Cottage. Sorry, I got a bit fluffy mouth. Not a good way to start. Yep, still there. Um, I'm going to recycle some bats. I nipped over to Cockermouth to go and pick up my stock from the shop over there. Um, so I won't be selling my items out of the shop, uh, Moshy Beads and Cockermouth anymore for a variety of reasons. So if you've found me via that shop, um, you know where to find me. You've got my cards with my flyers and my details and everything else. So anyway, I'm recycling the bats today. I do have a couple of little mini sets that I will be putting onto my website because at the end of the day, if they sell, they sell. But these ones are the larger ones that I've split up from other sets before and I'm going to now recycle them. So I have got some uh, merino and some uh, merino with glitz in them and I wanted to make this blend a little bit darker. Um, so when you're carding your bats, there's a variety of ways to do it and for a variety of reasons. So if you wanted to spin up wool um, to create a really lovely, warm, thick, like for example, just an example there's many knitters and spinners out there that are a lot more experienced in years than i am but from the research and the methods that i've used i found that if i want to create a nice warm fluffy jumper um in a wool in a woolen spun yarn um i want to card the fibers um in a specific way so i want them to cross over each other i don't want them straight or anything like that um I want them to sit at different angles, to cross over threads, so when I'm spinning it, it traps the air inside the fibres. So when you're carding, you want to keep that in mind, and that's where recycling bats comes in really great with that, um, like taking them apart and pulling them, because even though I've carded them in a straight line, if I'm just to pull the, just a small section away now, and then start pulling at it, I'm going to get, and I don't know if you can see it, but I am going to get crossover fibres. So if I pull that, they're not going to go in a straight line. They're going, do you see how that's coming apart there? They're going across. So they've, they're going um, horizontally, vertically. I can't think. Um, so yeah, so they're going in that direction and sort of that direction. So when I'm feeding it through the carder again, even when I'm putting in rovings that like the fibres are already going in a straight line, I am now creating a technique that means that when I spin my wool later on, I will end up hopefully with a woolen prepped yarn. So remember, depending on the project that you want to do, whether it's for weaving, so you're spinning your wool, or whether you want it for weaving, um, shawls or blankets or anything like that, or if you're crocheting or knitting with that end product, you're going to get something that's going to help trap in the air. Um, it will crease later on at a later date, but that's fine because it's something you're going to be using all the time. Um, it also helps with the elasticity of the fibres because they're not all going in a straight line and they're pulling against each other. They're crimping across, so they've got mo they've got a way to move because the air will he help them just move around a little bit in sections when you stretch it to put it on and, and things like that. So. So there's, there's benefits to doing different spins in different ways. So woolen is a really nice fluffy yarn and you'll probably end up, it's the sort of thing I uh, would spin into a DK weight. So once it's plied up you will and once it's set and been washed and everything else, it will bounce out, it will fill out. And that's the air that's trapped inside those fibers as it's drying. So that's what happens with that. Now, if you want to prep and I would say as well that that technique, carding wool um, for felters, especially if you're a needle felter, and because the fibres are crossing over, there's some of the work's done for you as well. So that technique's good and versatile for all types of fibre crafts. So also you've got your worsted style yarns or style carding. So when you're carding worsted, now you've heard me talking about um, making sure when I'm carding um, dried fleece, it's like the wee sand that I did couple um, the other month. And I, and I explained when I'm carding my fibres, I want to try and get them all going in a straight line in the same direction. I don't want them crossing over each other. And that was more because I was trying to make sure that any VM that was left inside there, vegetable matter for those that don't know, um, for any of 
bits and pieces that were left inside the fibre so I wanted them to drop out so I really wanted that fibre to go in a parallel or linear direction all going uniformly in the same way um, so you want that sort of technique when you're carding wills and fibres to create a worsted yarn now with a worsted yarn you want things like the rovings to go in the same direction so you want that or if you've carded up um fleeces and you've the, you've got them all going as straight as possible you're not really going to get them any straighter than you can already do by hand without large machinery so just do the best you can put it through a couple of times and you should start to see and when you pull it apart to refeed it through again turn it instead of so say that's your bat um split a section off now this is your up and down section when you feed it back through turn it on its side and i've explained this before that'll help your fibers start to go through consistently in a straight line so when you put it through so this is your, your back you strip your piece off turn it from its top and tail top and bottom turn it onto its side so the middle and the outer side and feed them through like that just open them up a little bit and it'll help the fibers go through straight so that's just my little tip i don't know if anybody else has any other tips if you do drop them in the comments below so with a worsted yarn um what you're doing is making this yarn very very strong you're helping it become more durable there isn't much elasticity in there but it'll become a harder wearing yarn and with that you because the, the the fibers are going in a straight line some fibers that have got a really good sheen and luster will really be highlighted when you apply that you'll end up with a lot more sheen on it instead of it crossing over and, and smudging into each other and when you're blending your cards with other fibers and they're all going through in a straight line you'll really really enhance the different tones and fibers that you're using in that spin um, and it'll also as well create with a worsted wool a really nice drape that doesn't crease so you'll end up a really lovely project that very rarely creases so that's great if you're making shawls if you're making um, very fine um, hand knitted jumpers with slight lacing things like that in there in my imagination that's how I imagine anybody else got any information on that drop the comments below or even tag me on um, Instagram and then I can see what projects you've done with a worsted style knitting um, then I mean the end of the day this is hand spun it's not going to look perfect you don't want it to look perfect it's always going to have that slightly rustic look and feel anyway um, not everybody wants to buy manufactured yarn or can afford to buy manufactured yarn with this when you're making your own wool and, and spinning it yourself you've got little projects in mind or you like to do pattern work jumpers so you're always going to have a collection of wools and you're building that up and building that up until you can make that perfect fair isle jumper that you've been dreaming of making for ages i've got one and it's got chickens on it and i'm yet to find enough time in my day <laughs> to spin up the wool blend it spin it so i can start making this flaming jumper that i want so yeah so in that as well um you'll end up with it being more an insulated um fiber uh, more insulated knitted project or woven project and also with wet felting personally i think when you're wet, wet felting you want your fibers to all go in the same direction so if you're pulling like you would do if you had merino or something like that and you're pulling your sections off to layer them up then with a worsted style back blend you should be able to achieve that without the fibers crossing over too much um, if you don't use me for buying your your um, your blends from and you've got somebody that you regularly you regularly order from ask them if you're a wet felter to card the fibers in a worsted way a worsted direction or a worsted technique um, they should know exactly what you mean if not they'll go google it and, and look up that information but anybody that's doing this sort of fibers should know exactly what you're looking for especially when it comes to custom orders so there you go so that's just my hints and tips now today i'm recycling bats so because i'm recycling bats i am going to be creating a woolen carded fiber so i have this one these purples and i have got this one which has got little hints of turquoise it's got bits of um, teal green in there and i'm mixing that with that and i'm going to add in some really dark colors 
into there so i've got alpaca bamboo and i think that's black shetland as well so i'm adding those in so those and there's lots of sparkle in there and i have got some rose fibers in that and i think i've got some sari silk added into there and some bright pops of pink and i've got some really lovely um white it's more it's a sort of white um merino uh, glitz with trilobal in it so i'm going to create a slightly galactic sort of blend today so that's what i'm going to be doing with that so if you want to carry on watching me thank you um and i'll see you on the other side i might stop and have a little chat and show you what i'm doing things like that but you'll just see me carrying on um i'm not going to separate the colors i'm just going to let them all just filter through and create layers and everything else in between these fibers i'm not doing a gradient or anything like that i'm just letting it do its own thing because at the end of the day this is a recycled bat i do have another um, this is fairy dust. I did have this on the website for a while, but I actually took some down to the shop. And this is a gradient blend. It's really, really pretty. But I do have a roving. Um, I think that's Shetland that I dyed up. So I was thinking about mixing these together because it's got little hints of grey in there. Um, and it's got the dusky tones in there as well. So I was thinking about blending them together to zoosh this up a little bit and calm this down a little bit so i'll be turning this gradient bat into a mixed blend bat and again that'll be a woolen blend so there we go so i might do this on this video i might do this tomorrow on my live chat because it is friday today so yeah enjoy thank you very much Okay, so that's actually turned out quite nice that I can see all this ripple effect of the different colours in there. So it's more blended than I would normally do on my wools. But sometimes you just want something that's going to give you pops of colour all the way through. 
and this is full of bling i mean you can't see it here at the moment but it's absolutely sparkling so i'm just the, the fibers are really sandwiched together and quite packed so because of that it's quite tough to get off so i always do it in little sections and just give it a wiggle and it should fly through with your doffer on your card and then you grab that troll by your hair and this just comes off so much easier than just dragging it because that just put pressure on the unit or wherever you're using so i just roll the back a little bit and then make like a swish roll and do the roly-poly all the way to the end and then i'll just quickly now that's at the end there and then i'll go around one more time just to make sure i've picked up all the other fibers on that blend so i'm um, trying to just get you to sit up a little bit more okay so there we go that's one done i am going to do the the other one in a tick but i thought well if i just do one you can see how this turns out and then I can do the blending of the other pink one and then you can see how that one turns out and then we've had the best of both worlds. So, just fold that over, pull that out. I can feel, I can feel with it being a worsted, wool, uh, sorry, a woolen carded bat or inspired bat with the fibres and I feel, I can feel the pull on it more when I'm drafting out my um, my bat or sort of, sort of for rolling into its um, little sausage roll. So underneath, that's what the fibres look like. It's actually a lot darker. It's quite bright in here today. Um, it's a lot darker than it actually is, but there's lots of black and darker tea tones in there. So I'm just, and hints of turquoise, just the tiniest little splotches. So that, is two butts blended in together it is a lot darker than you think um you'll see it when i put the pictures up for the listing for monday so i'll have one of those and one of this other one so yeah you can definitely feel the difference if i was to have been carding that um inspired by parallel linear lines it definitely comes out a lot easier it splits up a lot easier as well and to the point sometimes i always feel like oh i'm going to rip the bat in half so there is a massive difference in the way so if you were to card fibers that you've bought rovings from a local supplier um uk supplier and other rovings have already done, gone through the milling system and they're all going the same line when you putting them on your card or you are in retrospect going to be creating a carded bat that will be a worsted style yarn at the end of it and you will feel the difference if you just have a little play around with your fibers go and grab a couple of one of those old bats that you've not used yet put it through your drum carder see the difference between that and blending straight from the roving and nothing else and when you pull it out there is a massive difference on the woolen one you'll feel the tug on it and you've got to really sort of force it to spread out um, and you'll probably find the same as well when you're tearing it into sections to make mini drafts uh, for drafting afterwards for spinning with now with the worsted one you will feel the difference it will be a lot gentler a lot smoother um and it won't there won't be any give in it it will literally just come out for you and you have to just be a bit more gentle because those fibers are running along each other they're not knitted into each other and crossing over there's a massive difference in that preparation so I'll just plonk that in there and I will get the other one out and sorted. So I hope this information is helpful for you. It's always a learning curve and it takes years to remember everything. Just get yourself a little notebook and write it all down. Just these little hints and tips. I mean, there's books out there to read. That's great. But sometimes rewriting it down yourself helps you remember that information and retain it more as well. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little demo of exactly what I mean about when you're blending your bats and turning them from face to sides. And you'll see exactly what I mean, because these fibres have got quite a lot of colours in them. So I'm doing the, um, I think it was fairy dust. So I'm just going to blend this up. I've already blended one and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'm just going to split that down a little bit more. 
So, yeah, so I'm going to, this will be a woolen bat, but because I'm going to feed the fibres in, in a linear direction, it will be a lot softer and you'll see exactly what I mean about when I'm pulling the bat out. So I'm just going to split these up a little bit more, tear them into longer sections. I mean, because if you were spinning this yourself, you would pull that and all the fibres would still come out in a straight line okay you see that sorry i don't mean to be patronizing that's not my intention at all i'm just trying to make things a little bit easier for some people just can't grasp the idea um because sometimes the most obvious things just seem so technical and there's really no technicality about it it's just about method and prepping that's all it is so i've got my little pile of um gray and pink there i want to keep them to one side brighter pink brighter pink more white more white and white sections and instead of going with that um roving well i have kept a little bit just to keep the tone down so i'm pulling some of this apart I've, i think there's about 25 grams of this here and i've ended up going for a gray because i just want to mute these tones down a lot more I just need to come up with a name for it now, which is always the hardest thing. And the reason why I name things, some people, I, I've posted, I post some of my things, uh, my products on Facebook Marketplace. And I have one on the occasion. Why have you called that Arabian Nights? It looks nothing like it. Well, do you know what? Sometimes that's what those colours make me think of is like the sunsets at night time and things like that. Or it could be... Arabian nights I was thinking I think at the time I was thinking like saffrons and and the spices that are all used in North Africa and things like that so that's where that came from for me um, but then there's another reason as well my mem it helps me um, know exactly what bats I'm going for and the look of them as well so it's like would you name um, your bat number one, number two, number two, number four, number five, um, 1.5 or whatever? No, for me, I name them because either A, I've been inspired by something or B, I just in my mind want to keep a record of what it is that I'm looking for. Or if anybody ever asks me, oh, you had this such and such blue daisies in, um, would you be able to do something like that for me again? Then I know exactly what it is that I'm going looking for. So that's why I name my products. For me to remember and for hopefully helps people think oh do you know what yeah i know exactly where you're coming from on that one do you excuse my ping ping on my phone i can't turn off my notifications well I, yeah i don't know how to turn turn the volume down so whenever you hear any pinging that's what it is so i'm using this gorgeous natural grain merino in here um in this blend as well Okay, so you've seen me just strip these lines down. So now, do you see there in the middle? That's my sides. So there's your top. There's your bottom. Okay, so I'm just, I'm pinching the toppings off of these so I can put them on at the end. So when I'm going through it, this is what I do when I'm recycling my bath so it doesn't all end up blending through. So what I'm going to do is lie it on its side. Now you can see all those layers. Now you will still see these layers sandwiched in between um fleece that you've not dyed up and you just want a card so you can have a natural looking yarn so when i'm feeding that through and i'll keep on feeding it through i want to keep those straight lines in there and that will help me create a um worsted style carded back okay so this is what i'm going to do with this one now it is going to i mean this is not going to be 100 percent a worsted carded back because it is a recycled blend um from an older bat and some of the fibers will still cross over but what we're trying to do is trying to keep this because it's only going to get carded once i'm not going to repeatedly card it through which you would do to achieve cleaning up a, um, a fleece so what i want to do is um keep these lines going in the same direction and i will end up with a a woolsteed i'm going to go with a woolsteed style yarn so it's slightly woolly and slightly worsted because everything's going through as a 95% straight lines so that's what I'm gonna do now so I'm gonna start off with the gray and I'll just show you I'll just plonk it down a little bit okay so you should be able to see what I'm doing there yeah you can so I'm just gonna feed the gray through and then I'm gonna get this back and I'm gonna draft it out a little bit so you can see all those lines 
I'm pulling it because I want to make sure that everything's going in as straight a line as I could possibly make it. Okay, so that's that one through. Um, and I'm going to do that again. So I've got this lighter one. There's, where is it? There's the top, there's the bottom. Turn it on its side, fluff it out a little bit, and you will be able to see those lines in there. I'm going to pull it out a little bit more and a little bit more and I'm going to feed that through into the cargo and then I'm going to get some of this it's not Shetland that I've dyed it's actually Perindale so I'm going to feed that through try and keep these fibres as straight as I possibly can Put that through and a bit more grey merino I love the colour of this stuff. I really, when it comes to merino, I'm not a massive fan of merino. I do understand its qualities and its properties, but I prefer the coloured version of it. I do like the grey version, the actual grey on there. I think it's got a lot more character. So again, grab one of the bats, the one of the sections. I'm going to take off this topping, stick it to one side for later. So there's the top, there's the bottom turn it on its side and you can see the lines and I'm just gonna sort of draft it out a little bit help straighten out those fibers and then I'm gonna zhuzh, zhuzh it out that's the word for today I'm gonna zhuzh it out and carve that through so that's that so on a second just plonk you on my um, larger stand so you can see there the way that I've put that through, I've created stripes, more defined blended stripes. Uh, well, I say defined, not defined because I've just criticised, but I've just, I've just completely changed my wording. What I'm looking, what I've now ended up with is more blended stripes instead of defined sections of colour that I had in that bat. So they've now become a bit more muted, but you can still see where those lines are, those layers when that bat's been turned on its side and I've put it through the carder. So I'll just show you again. I'm just going to put through some more of this. And then I'm going to put in, there we go. So there's the top, there's the bottom, there's the side. And I'm going to just open it up a little bit. A bit more, got loads of silver bling in this. So you can see now, there's that hot pink coming through the middle. Yeah? So I'm going to add in another layer of grey. And I want some of the white this time. And stick that on its side. Open up those fibers a bit. And carve that through. You'll also find when the fibers are going through in all the same direction, um, your card is not fighting with you half as much. So I'm just going to put this through. Where's my card? So I'm just going to give that a bit of card that through there. A bit of um, packing. So I'm going to add a bit more of this white, again, turn it on its side, draft it out a little bit, feed that through, and another section of grey. So I've weighed all this out previously, which is what I do all the time, it's always my prep, my, that's my prep beforehand because I know how much wool and fibre uh, my carder can take. But then that varies again depending on breeds and that's something I'll talk about another time. So what I've got next, I think I'll use some of this hot pink. There's the tiniest little hints of blue in here but that's actually from Sari Silk. So I'm going to open that up. Plunk that on there. Tiniest 
take off these trappings of um, bling on the top, open this fibre up so they're all going straight as possible because at the end of the day I am recycling a bat. They are not going to be completely straight from when I put them on there in the first place. But if you have a limited supply of fibres and you don't have a massive stash but you want to experiment a little bit then this way you can get the gist of what it is that I'm meaning about creating a woolen blended bat or the um, the ambition to be able to do that and creating something that's going to be recycling your bat but make it more worsted then this is the, the tip that I would this is what I would do to achieve that I do apologise about the scratching I know some people don't like it but I'm trying <laughs> <laughs> oh well so as I say you're never going to um, get with recycling your bat blends you're never going to be able to obtain a completely um, fluid worsted straight linear line yarns but if you've only got a small stash to work from and that's something you want to try and um, achieve then this is my um, method for an alternative aspect instead of using rovings and creating those perfect straights then with your bats that you've got that you think oh do you know what that mustard and olive green uh, blended bat would look really really pretty if I was to add in some deep navy blue into there but I'm not quite sure how to do it I've got Makada but how do I blend this bat with this roving so this is exactly what I would do and that you don't want to achieve a airy fluffy um, woolen wool when you spin it up. This is the method that I use to achieve this. So, we're nearly done. My drum card is just about had enough of me. So I'm just going to fit on some more of this and I've got one more bit of fairy dust to put on. Another two pieces of grey to go in there. Uh, one more bit of grey on here. Oh, nearly, nearly, nearly finished. This last piece of stripped bat. Split that so it sits in its lines. Yeah, my car does not happy with me. It's like, oh, come on, Joe, my stomach's full. I can't, oh crikey, hold on a minute, sorry about that, um, I genuinely won't, don't want to take any more so I'm just going to stick on my toppings now and then card this and I should be able to take this off. Oh. Carded it enough times as I'm going through, so I'm just going to find the start of it. There it is. And because I've used Merino in there, I have to make sure that my breaking points are a little bit shorter than usual because of the length of the fibres. See, that comes up so much easier. And I tell you what, it comes up easier as well because majority of my fibres, I would say about 75% of these fibres are all going in the same direction and not crossing over half as much as what the darker one did. So I'm just going to keep going here. Try not to block up your viewing with the <laughs> fibre in your face there dear. There we go. Nothing worse than getting some fluff up your nose. Right, so I'm just going to grab my troll by her hair and do the roly-poly. I keep saying I need to get a t-shirt with that on it. Right, so I'll keep going. Nearly at the end. This is definitely a lot softer than the original Fairy Dust. This is um, 
a lot more subtle I would say still the same colours and you've seen me doing it but the greys definitely calmed that down and the hand dyed paradel as well that I had in my stash so I'm just going to move this lot out of the way so what I should feel in retrospect to the purple one the, di well, the darker one I did earlier on is when I'm starting to draft this out to create my little sausage for packing then it should draft out a lot more easier and if you just go back a little bit you'll see how much I was really pulling at those fibres to be able to open them up so look how gentle that comes out I'm barely touching that so I'm just holding that in the middle otherwise it clumps out the same place but that is so much easier to move and manipulate so I have been able to card most of those fibres um, about, I, was, I would generally say about 70% of those are definitely all going in the same direction. So you will end up with a, a nice spun yarn, easy to prep. Oh, crikey, my bracelet's stuck to there. Um, and you, you could definitely, by recy recycling your bats, nearly achieve a worsted, a worsted wool. It looks quite purpley, but it's not, it's just the light. So I'll take some pictures of those in a sec. Right, so there you go. Two recycled bats out of three different types of bats. So I've ended up with a very woolen style carded bat with the crossover fibers and a recycled bat that I have attempted to Make sure all the lines and layers are all still going in the same direction. And now that you've seen me do that with the coloured wools, maybe from when I spoke about that with the Wissant, you can definitely see exactly the method that I am um, using. But there you go. So I hope you really found this the video useful. Maybe picked up some things that you, you weren't aware of, or you've managed the information that you had. And you're like, I just don't get it. Hopefully that's sunk in now and it's helped you a lot. I've been there. There's times that willing and worsted. I just couldn't get my head around that a couple of years ago. And all of a sudden, when I started doing this, it's just like, oh, right, pennies dropped. I know exactly what you're on about now. So, yeah, we've all been there, love. So um, if you've got any comments or suggestions for future content, just drop them in the comments below and I can write them down. I'm always a little bit stuck, not quite sure. And then all of a sudden an idea will pop in my head and I'm like, right, I'll go do that. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to do a little video on how to clean and maintain your um, carding bat. It'll only be a few minutes, but I'll put that up there next week. It might help a few. I use a variety of little tiny tools that are just around the house um, to help me clean mine. There's nothing worse than having dirty tools and equipment, especially if... It means that you, if you get into the practice of tidying up afterwards, then you don't have to clean it before you start working. So anyway, I hope you find this useful. And um, you can find these bats that will be on the website on Monday. Um, maybe a couple of others as well next week. I've got brand new crafters pennies. I've got one I've listed yesterday uh, with the nautical theme. And I have another one that I'm just about to finish off now. And that'll be going on the website as well today. So there's two on there this month. Um, but yeah. Catch me on Instagram tomorrow about lunchtime, Saturday, um, for a live chat. Throw questions at me, ask me things. If I don't know the answers, I'll go and find it out. So take care of yourselves. Um, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next week. Thank you.